Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. Yeah, you're probably wondering about the gloves. You see, I got into a bit of an argument with a hot plate and burned them pretty badly. I didn't think you guys wanted to see charred, bandaged hands. So, where were we? The Scarlet Witch is dead, robots are trying to take over the world, and everybody's a moron. So let's dig into Ultimates 3, number 5. with the lead robot, who has taken the name Yellow Jacket, though apparently also is named Ultron in a one-two punch of referencing the main Marvel Universe, giving a whole ton of exposition about why he decided to overturn his organic overlords. You know, a lot of people have told me that this has nothing to do with Ultimates 1 and 2, but this book, despite a few hiccups, minor errors, and Pyro being a bad guy even though everywhere else he's a good guy, it's actually built on nothing but references to the previous ones. For example, the explanation. In Ultimates 2, Hank Pym went to visit Nick Fury in the hopes of contributing robot soldiers to aid the Ultimates. Fury turned him down, but during that time, the Scarlet Witch met with the robots and, once again, referencing the fact that in the main Marvel Universe, the Scarlet Witch was married to a robot called Vision, there was a throwaway line from Quicksilver asking her if she was flirting with the robot. However, according to this comic, not only was she flirting with the robot, but indeed accidentally cast some sort of spell on the machine, making it obsessed with her. Because, of course, a machine programmed to fight and kill would naturally possess a libido that serves no purpose in its programming. It started with hacking into Tony Stark's personal computer, leaking his sex antics onto the internet. He needed to be distracted, dulled with alcohol. Stark would have spotted the replacements. I reiterate, Tony Stark is always drinking in the Ultimates. I created Venom to kidnap Wanda, to keep her from them for what was to come. And why did you make it look like Venom? But she wasn't there. She was with him. Her brother, Pietro. My rival. This is going to make for a very interesting episode of Jerry Springer. Who should she choose? Her robot lover or her brother lover? You, my creator, had to be removed from the equation. However, it turns out that I didn't have to. Man, that pudding's deadly. He then says that he followed Wanda out and saw Pietro about to exclaim his love to her. It was at that moment, that fateful moment, that I realized she would never be mine. It was a crime of passion. You know, you could have just shot him. As he explains that he's going to replace the Ultimates with his own robot versions, he says he's doing it all for Wanda. Furthermore, he tries to justify his actions by saying that by killing Wanda, her father would be enraged and start a war with humankind. Your robot brain is surprisingly limited. Pietro was your rival and, as we'll see, still cared about by Magneto despite earlier misgivings and would probably have done the same job without killing the one you loved. Open file. You are an ed e -it. He further explains, seriously, this entire page is exposition of the entire plot. That's well-crafted storytelling, isn't it? That by bonding human DNA with the mainframe machines, it prevents degradation of the human tissue, and that the DNA maintains its integrity better when the human host is alive. That doesn't even begin to make sense! It's not like human flesh is psychic and keeps tabs on any disconnected bits of it! Wasp and Hank Pym decide to follow him, but also realize that they need help. Cut back to Magneto, who's making short work of the attacking forces. All of a sudden, the Robo-Ultimates show up. Wow, that was quick. We also see that Wasp and Hank Pym freed Iron Man and stowed away on the jet. Apparently Quicksilver isn't the only one with super speed, otherwise I have no idea how the hell they're doing everything so fast! 
back over to Black Panther fighting the Juggernaut. And I know I'm supposed to be worried about his well-being at all, but every time I look at that red eye, all I can think of is... By your command, Imperious Leader. Wolverine rides a Triceratops and knocks the Juggernaut away and threatens to slice up the Juggernaut. Oh, but then Black Panther reveals that he's Captain America. Yeah, that was the big secret. And furthermore, Iron Man and the Mini-Marvels show up and ask what everyone must be asking right now. Why are you dressed as a panther? Where is the real panther? Is there a real Black Panther? And what's the answer to that, Bob? That's correct! There is no answer! It's just one big unexplained what the hell! Back over to Valkyrie with Mastermind and Pyro talking about how much they'll enjoy raping her since her mind is hallucinating. Ugh, this comic has a thin layer of icky on every page. However, in her hallucinations, some silhouetted form comes to her and says that he didn't give her power so that she could die. Who is this person? What deal is he talking about? I have no idea. People have said that there was an annual issue that actually filled in the plot holes of Valkyrie and Black Panther, but in my humble opinion, if they couldn't be bothered to put these answers in the comic itself, if the story cannot be contained within its own pages and requires peripheral reading, there is no reason why I should need to read it for the answers. For crying out loud, at least Amazon's attack tried to explain what happened in tie-in issues. This one just tosses logic to the wind and says, Screw you! You want answers? Then buy more of the same junk you didn't like in the first place. Anyway, Valkyrie wakes up. Men! Dead men! No, no, no. Valkyrie for the ninth time. It's one fish, two fish. Red fish, blue fish. So Valkyrie cuts off Mastermind's head. What is with this book and its decapitation fetish? Venom told Valkyrie he was going to take off her head, Wolverine told Hawkeye he'd cut off his head, and now Valkyrie actually